Across the country, lawmakers are taking aim at reproductive rights. Arizona, Idaho, Georgia, and Tennessee are the latest states to introduce bills that would put restrictions on birth control and on abortions. Why are lawmakers trying to act like doctors? Joining us now is Gloria Felt. She's the former president of Planned Parenthood and author of the book, No Excuses, Nine Ways Women Can Change How We Think About Power. Gloria, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Alex. So, Honestly, we were going to try and put up on a graphic all the things that are happening in states around the country <laughs> and it would overload the system. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I want to talk specifically about what's going on in states like Arizona, where Arizona, Terry, Arizona lawmaker Terry Proud said, Personally, I'd like to make a law that mandates a woman watch an abortion being performed prior to having a surgical procedure. We talk about Idaho, where Chuck Winder, Winder uh, let's actually, it said on Monday, rape and incest was used as a reason to oppose this. I would hope that when a woman goes into a physician with a rape issue, that physician will indeed ask her about perhaps her marriage. Was this pregnancy caused by normal relations in a marriage, or was it truly caused by rape? I mean, the list goes on. What do you, what do you, what do you think accounts for what seems to be increasing attacks on not just women, women's freedom, reproductive health at all? Well, to a certain extent, it's, it's not increasing. This has been going on for the last 40 years, practically. I mean, it, it's been chipping, 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 chipping away. I think what has happened is two things. Number one, and I, I want to thank Senator Blunt and I want to thank Rush Limbaugh for splitting the world open and making it very clear that what this is about is not just abortion. It's about contraception, too. Yeah. And what that's really about is about women's ability to have an equal place in this world. I mean, it's really laid bare the kind of misogyny that has under, been underlying the attacks on women's reproductive rights, women's reproductive health, and reproductive justice over the years. And so these bills, they're really nothing new. I, you know, I, I, I've dealt with them over and over and over again, but here's what, here's what needs to happen. What needs to happen is there needs to be more coming forward on the pro-woman, pro-choice side. And we're finally beginning to see some of that with some of these pieces of legislation in, in, in states. But I don't mean, and, and I, with all due respect to that point, I don't even think this has gone beyond just pro-choice and pro-life, right? I mean, some of this rhetoric, I feel like, is so damaging. You talk about Rush Limbaugh. You talk about women being forced to watch abortions before they go under, undergo a procedure. There's a bill currently um, being debated in Tennessee that would require, that would post a woman's me medical history, the fetus's age, her race, her ethnicity, her county, you know, her number of prior abortions if she were to have the procedure. I mean, this right. seems like a much more direct attack and a way of, if not targeting, humiliating women who choose to have abortions. It is still a legal procedure. And I, Abby, I ask you, as a young woman who is a conservative, a Republican, uh, what do you make of this? You know, I... I sway to the side of life because I have two adopted sisters and I'll always be grateful for their mothers giving birth to them. That being said, you know, I hear a lot about taking funding away from Planned Parenthood. Uh, that's a lot going on in the party today and that scares me because there are so many wonderful things that Planned Parenthood does. And, and I just think that it's, it's sad the conversation is turning to that point where I don't, I think it should be a private thing for women and it's putting us out there and it's kind of embarrassing in a way and I don't think it needs to be like that. Well, why, but what is, what accounts Michael Steele for, I mean, <laughs> what accounts for the fact that no one in their Republican Party is, is, you know, on the national stage saying anything about this. Well, the, the one thing that strikes me about this entire conversation that we seem to have fallen into is that there's only men talking. Mm -hmm. And it, that, to me, is the most stunning part about this, that where are uh, the Republican women, and it was nice to have your voice a part of this just now, but... The, the, but what about you, Michael? But, Why aren't you out there well, talking but, but about the, it? Because you understand fact, this and you have my understood fact is, it. My, I have talked about it, but I've talked about it from the perspective of why don't we have, A, why are we having this conversation when people are trying to get jobs? I mean, well, we're, we're litigating because things, but the, you make the well, point. No, this Republicans, is no let, me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you why we're but, having this conversation when people are trying to get jobs. It's because there is a direct relationship be between women's capacity to be economically self-supporting and women's capacity to be able to plan and space their childbearing. You know, you can't get through college. You, you, can't, get, you can't get through a career if you can't plan and space your own childbearing. Uh, the, I, I mean, and, I got all of that, but I get back to my core point from, from a party standpoint on an issue like this, that the voices that we hear emanating out of the party are not the women of the party and, and their 
their views on this, regardless of where they are on this, it, the conversation becomes tilted when you have a panel discussion on the Hill and there's all these men right. who are there. Where are the Republican women in Congress? Well, I think the, the better issue is not where the women voices, like where are the reasonable voices? Yes. I, mean, I, I think I think the the um, it, it really well, doesn't matter person. who's saying you know who's saying it. It matters like what are the what are the opinions being expressed and are people willing to take some political heat to do the right thing? And I think that's the you know but, why, but that's but, a ju that's a judgment. On your it is part a judgmental issue. It's reasonable. True. But well, no, my concern is I'm not going to judge whether what you say is reasonable or unreasonable. I just want to hear your voice in the conversation, and that has not been... Well, as, why, as, why, as, did, but, why did those Republicans well, let me say, why did those let me say Republican something there. not allow Sandra Fluck to actually even talk when and, she came to Congress and, and wanted to? And more to the point, to. why did Mitt Romney, who had a chance to really take a stand on some of the, the, the venom... That because Russian he's was, wanting to get through the primary, and that's the problem. Right. And but that's a terrible, it, terrible it's, it's reason. Terrible. No, it is terrible, but that's just... Yeah, but there's a lot of things in politics that are terrible, but it's political, and that's the way it works. But if you're talking about like a highway bill or you're talking about something where you're like someone's not willing to take a strong position on that you know you like okay you give them a pass for political reasons maybe but if you're talking about basic issues of human life and about the way people are uh, you know live and and these these are core things this is at least as equal to jobs i mean this is this is bigger than jobs and i think i think it's a pretty i mean i think i think mitt romney shows one of the reasons why he's having so much trouble in this race because well and, and when he gets into the general he's going to have a really big problem right. because he's the gonna upsurge, have to switch back over he, again he so. is and so then then they can call him a flip-flopper so well, it's going I, to be I, bad for I, him I either way i would caution on that a little bit I, I mean i get i get the you know certainly your affiliation and, and relationship to planned parenthood and a lot of the organizations but I think you'd be surprised there are a lot more women who who are, are not as strident on this issue uh, as as I mean, it's they're not a question made out to be. No, it's not a question no but I'm just strident. saying, not, I mean, strident, not in a negative way, but just strident out there, you know, w presuming that every woman is going to line up. But I'm not talking about pro choice other, and pro life. I'm talking about yeah. some of these saying. extended measures. So. Uh, look, it is a debate that is obviously going to continue. The right. Supreme Court is looking at the Affordable Care Act and the individual mandate. And we need more women is, out there talking about it. That's my Absolutely. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to bringing you back on for more robust discussion coming up. Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning says hello to his new team and his new pal, John Elway. But three is a crowd, and that could soon mean that Tim Tebow will be the odd quarterback out. We will discuss the brewing Tebow gate next in What Now?